Washington DC, a city full of upwardly mobile politicos, a downwardly mobile underclass, and thousands of journalists writing about all of them. And then we head up north to the oldie American town of Boston for the green of the Irish, the scarlet of the Red Sox, and the multicolored banners and scarves of Boston's huge student population. The Late Show investigates the decline of the space age. Do you think it's lost in space forever? Philosopher Ray Monk lifts the lid on brain research. Roger, stand by. And fashion victim or virus victim, zoologist Richard Dawkins explains how a trend spreads like a virus. It's all the same, do you copy? Does wrinkles in time help prove the theory of Big Bang? Reading you loud and clear. And back on Earth, how to be a TV scientist. Who are they? Where do they come from? And cue the watchdog on BBC One in a moment as Anne Robinson exposes more high street scandal. The challenge is to lop £5 billion off the budget deficit. Can they do it? In the Red concludes in half an hour on BBC Two. Now on BBC Two, in tonight's open space, Doug Lowe and Bill McDonnell argue that we need trade unions more than ever. Right, well, we need a title for the programme, Doug. So what have you come up with? Uh, well, nothing yet. What about Union Jews? No, no, sounds like money, you see. Back to the Future. Being done, Spielberg. No return to Victorian values. Very snappy, Doug, isn't it? That's very snappy. We like trade unions. I do as well, but it's not a good title. No, we don't want to mention unions, do we, in the title? No, I don't know. Oh, we'll think of something. Yeah, well, they will. <laughs> From Sherard's classic account of working conditions in the north of England in 1897. The certainty of a shortened life, the possibility of a sudden and terrible death, and constant risks of painful accidents are well known to all the chemical workers in these alkali factories, and are accepted by them with an indifference which might seem callous were it not so apparently heroic. The men joke about their condition. I asked one man, whom I met in one of the factories, what they were manufacturing there.